This little icon here actually covers two things. It's to do with pre-compositions and how they show up in your main composition, and it's to do with vector layers. So if I had a text layer in here, let's create a text layer. So I'm going to click on my text tool and just type text. There's text layer. And you'll notice it's got the little sunlight showing, telling me that this is a vector layer. In other words, it doesn't matter how big I make it, it'll never show pixelation and distortion. It'll always be perfect even taken up to huge sizes. So the main role you'll see it with is often to show that it's a vector layer. But, and I'm not going to explain this in detail, it's also used for collapsing transforms. Now we'll come to that when we deal with pre-compositions and 3D a lot later on, but it is the button for collapsing transformations. Just know that and hold that into the back of your mind for future reference. This here is the quality switch. Now, 99 times out of 100 or even 999 times out of 1,000, you're not even going to touch this. This is at full quality. You can see that by the unbroken line. However, you can click on a layer and turn it into draft. And you can see that the text up here has actually changed quite considerably by changing this to draft. And you can see it's draft by the dots as opposed to the full straight line. So it reduces the quality of a layer. Now it's unusual that you would ever need to use this. There are a few examples where you may want to use it, but it's very rare. So most of the time you're going to leave this at full quality unless you're really struggling, in which case you might turn them all to draft and carry on working. And it might be a lot easier to carry on doing your work because After Effects is using a lot less resources. But I'm going to leave those all at full. This icon here is showing you that FX effects have been applied to your layer. Now if I click on this Lindisfarne layer here you'll see that I've got the color rules applied but I've also got tritone above it. Now to turn them off I have to turn off tritone and then turn off color rules to get back to the original turn on color rules, turn on tritone and I have to turn off the individual FX but if I want to turn them all off in one go I click the FX button and then they've all gone and then they're all back on. Sorry that's the wrong one it should have been Lindisfarne underneath they're all off and are all back on again. So that's the FX button. Uh, this particular icon is to do with frame blending. We're not going to look at that in this tutorial. Also, we're not going to be looking at the one after it, which is called motion blur. But if you've got something moving in your composition, you want to make it look realistic, you apply motion blur down here, and then you would actually click the icon up here. And this little icon here means you have an adjustment layer. So that is merely telling you that this layer here, a contrast FX layer with this curve, is actually an adjustment layer, which is an invisible layer, if you like, with an effect applied to it. And finally, this thing here can turn a layer into a 3D layer. At the moment, none of these layers are 3D. If I want to make them 3D so that they have Z space, let me just open up my twirly for my Lindisfarne layer, open up transforms, move it up a little, you'll see that it says position and I've got two parts of an array which is the X and the Y position. If I click the 3D little box here I now have position and I have three. I have X, Y and Z and Z would move it forward and backwards in screen space. So we're going through all of these buttons just very quickly to show you what they are. The next one, which I quite often end up clicking this button down here, which I don't want, is this one here, which is Expand and Collapse Transfer Controls. If I open that up, that gives me blend modes. These are like the Photoshop blend modes. And the T key is for Preserve, Transparency and Track Mats. This is for a whole other tutorial area. However, you might want to use the blend modes to blend one layer with another to create all kinds of different looks. We're going to be covering this in another tutorial at a later date. So I'm not going to go through all of these now, but this is for track mats and transparency and blend modes. And if we click the last button here, this is giving me data on my layers. It's showing me the in point of my layer, the out point of my layer, how long the layer is, and also it says here stretch. Now this, to start off with, looks fairly weird. It says 100%. What does that mean? It means that the layer is playing at precisely the right speed. 
In other words, 100% means it's playing completely correctly. If I was to change it to 200 or 50, I'd be changing the speed in which it plays back. So if I select my background C down here, and at the moment it says 100%, and you can see that it is a 1 minute, 39 seconds and 11 frames long layer. And it's 100%. Now if I just hit my spacebar to play, you'll see what it looks like. I'm just going to turn off this blend mode back to normal. And that's kind of how it looks. But if I change this stretch and I drag it down to, I know, 16%, You'll see firstly its duration is now only 15 seconds and 23 frames long so it's a lot shorter and when I hit the space bar the whole thing plays massively quickly in comparison. Also I can grab it and take it even wider, I can take it beyond 100, take it up to 200% if I want and then you can see it's gone hugely off my screen, it's very long and if I hit the space bar I get slow motion and that is the time incidentally I ought to say when you would go to this button here and enable frame blending because that will make it play back a lot smoother but it will take a lot more of your system resources. Okay so those are the basic timeline features I'm just going to turn them all off because there is one other shortcut that you need to know and that is the F4 key. If you hit F4 it quickly gives you the main ones that you're going to use. So F4 collapses and expands shows the bits and pieces that you're most likely to use and if everything isn't there rather than always clicking on these buttons what you can do is you can right click and you can bring out well here's the parent this is the parent feature where I can decide if one layer is going to control another and there will be another tutorial on that later on so don't worry about that if you don't want it anymore you can then go to the columns and turn off parent finally the other one that we haven't seen is keys click on keys and at the moment there's nothing there but if we do a little bit of animation so let's take this particular layer here Linda's farm and don't worry about what I'm going to do now I'm just going to quickly animate it to show you what's going on so I've created some animation you'll see under keys I've got this lovely little navigation now this says go back to the previous keyframe go to the next keyframe and in actual fact I can even add a keyframe by clicking this one in the middle so I can now navigate between my keys in my keyframe. So don't worry about the animation because we will be covering that later on. I just want to show you what all of these bits and pieces do. So these are the columns. You can set them up how you like. You can turn them on. You can turn them off. If I don't want keys here, I can click it and drag it and I can move it. And I can let go. And now I've moved keys over here if that's where I want it. So we've moved things around a little bit. You can play around with these bits and pieces. They're a little bit fiddly to work with, I do warn you, but you can actually play with them. You can move these spaces in and out as well. So that's the basics for your timeline. In the next tutorial, I'm just going to briefly show you some of the simple keyboard shortcuts for selecting bits and pieces and trimming bits and pieces in your timeline. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Don't worry too much if you haven't got them all and your head's spinning a bit. The thing to really know is the F4 key for getting to most of the bits and pieces you're going to want, F4 to open it and F4 to close it. And the other thing to say is that there are more buttons up here that we haven't looked at, but don't worry, we will be covering those in other tutorials and an awful lot of what we've gone through today will become a lot more clear as we go through this AE Basics course. My name's Andrew Devis, I hope you found this tutorial useful, thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.